What's up guys, I'm LQ. This is the LQ Review. Thank you so much for joining me here on my YouTube channel. This is where I talk about all the geeky, nerdy stuff that I love to talk about. Movies, video games, comic books, TV shows. If it's geeky, if it's nerdy, I love to talk about it here. Right now I want to give you guys my review of the um, new shark attack thriller, Shark Season. Shark Season, starring Michael Madsen. Michael Madsen from Quentin Tarantino fame, Kill Bill, Reservoir Dogs, you know, Michael Madsen is just such a legendary actor in a lot of ways. He, you know, obviously he goes back decades, a lot more than Quentin Tarantino, but Michael Madsen is now starring in Shark Season, and Shark Season is a uh, direct-to-VOD movie. I don't think it was supposed to get a theatrical release. I don't think it was. Um... It's an Asylum movie, and I don't think an Asylum movie, so you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think an Asylum movie has ever gotten a theatrical release. I think they are always VOD, and Asylum movies are always notoriously bad. Oftentimes, Asylum mo movies like uh, steal ideas from mainstream movies and make their own low-budget version of that movie. Um, asylum movies are really bad. So, was Shark Season bad? Well, yeah. Yeah, it was a bad movie, but... It had a lot of redeeming qualities to it. A lot of redeeming qualities. So, let's get into it a little bit. So, Shark Season is about um, these three kayakers who, um, you know, they're kayaking in the ocean, and they decide to kayak beyond what they normally would, right? They, they, there was a hurricane recently, and the hurricane shifted some stuff at the ocean floor, created a new island, and they decide to kayak a little bit further out to this island. And, um, and they make it, you know, they, they make it out to the island, but once they're there, they begin getting stalked by a killer great white shark. And so they're on this island, and as the tides are coming in, the king tide, which by the way, they explain what the king tide is about 20 times in this movie. Like, we get it. We know what the king tide is now. You explained it once. It's twice, okay. They explain it like 20 times. But when the tide comes in, the uh, island starts disappearing, and eventually the island's going to be gone. Where have we seen this before? People enjoying ocean recreation, get attacked by shark, end up on a, on a little island, and the tide's coming in and the island's disappearing. I feel like we've seen this before. Hmm. I don't know. For some reason, my brain just has a shallow memory right now. It's not very lively. I don't know. Can't think of it. But I know I've seen it before. Um, no, obviously. The Shallows with Blake Lively. Uh, you know, that, that in a lot of ways is the plot to this to some degree. And the poster to Shark Season even says, based on real events. The Shallows also said based on real events, even though none of them were actually real events. They were real scenarios that none of this stuff actually happened in. Um, so with these kayakers, they, they eventually have to ditch. They have to ditch, they have to leave on their kayaks to try to make it to another island. Um, and obviously the shark follows them, and the shark behaves in ways that sharks don't behave. Um, but that's par for shark movies, right? Even in the shallows, that shark was behaving in ways that sharks don't behave. Um, so let's talk about uh, Paige McGarvin. Paige McGarvin is the lead in this movie. And she does a fine job. She does a fine job. She, um, um, you know, she's not a particularly good actress, uh, but she's able to, um, and neither is the other supporting, the other uh, female actor in her, um, what's her name, uh, Juliana De uh, Stefano plays Megan. She's not a very good actress either. Neither one of them are very good actresses. Uh, but what they are able to do well is... Um, the physical component of what this movie entails. There was screaming, there was crying, there was um, uh, moments of, of bearing their souls to each other. They, quite frankly, none of it... None, they didn't have the acting ability to, to effectively convey any of that. It just wasn't well done. 
but what they did do well was the physical parts of the of, of the performance where they had to um, you know have kind of the action sequences with the sharks that those were done pretty well obviously there's some rescue attempts things don't always go as they plan there's a small body count in this movie there's a lot of CGI a lot of really bad CGI and that's the thing about these shark movies is for some reason people keep watching them even though they look like cartoons <laughs> and, and you know I, I think that this was like a step above like here's your sci-fi channel char shark movies and then here is um, shark season it's a little bit better it's still really bad CGI really bad um, so yeah bad acting some decent physical acting, but overall pretty bad acting between Paige McGarvin and uh, Juliana Stef uh, DeStefano. Um, bad CGI, familiar plot. Um, this is all stuff that, that, that makes a bad movie. And yet, I enjoyed watching it. Why did I enjoy watching this bad Asylum movie? Well, number one, I am a sucker for shark movies. And I'm a sucker for shark movies that are so bad they're good. But this was a little bit more than that. Asylum movies are usually really, really, really just outlandish and hokey. This movie, Shark Season, I believe there was something there. I believe they had an idea. I believe that under the, under the right studio, this would have been a good engaging shark movie i believe the script was there i honestly do i believe the script was there maybe it needed a little bit dialogue touch up but the script was there there was some neat sequences in this first of all the the uh, premise itself even though it's something we've seen before it's engaging we've seen movies that were premises that we've seen before that were still good movies and engaging this could have been that we've seen this premise before but it could have been engaging it could have been good um, under, you know, with a, with a good cinematographer, with a good director making good decisions, we, we could have had some neat ocean cinematography. We could have had some, some exciting sequences on the kayaks. Guys, I can't tell you how many times we got a, a, a sequence where we just saw bas basically hear up of somebody with oars going, <sighs> paddling their oars and breathing heavily that doesn't convey any kind of tension that is a cheap way to film a, a um, kayaking sequence I'm not even convinced they were in the water when they were doing that um, a lot of these kayaking sequences it's supposed to show them kayaking fast ah, 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 ah. that doesn't do it that doesn't do it um, yeah yeah I think that with talented people I think with talented people who actually know how to make a suspenseful Hollywood horror film, I think this could have been really good. I really do. There are some fun sequences. There, there are some moments that could have been very tension-filled with the kayaks. Um, there, there, were, there was a, a engaging sequence where um, the shark was getting ready to attack the girls and a pod of dolphins comes in and, and, and and attacks the shark and gives the girls a chance to escape. Guys, that sounds outlandish, but there's precedence for that happening. That type of thing has happened in real life, where dolphins have protected humans in the water from sharks. It's literally happened. Google it. So the idea that of that happening, I don't have a problem with it. There's historical precedence for that, but it looked cheap and it looked like a cartoon in this version. With a, under a big Hollywood budget, it could have been a, a, an exciting action sequence in the movie. Instead, we get something that was laughable. There was a lot of good stuff in this that, that could have made for a good movie. Let's talk about Michael Madsen. Man, he's looking rough around the edges right now. Now he's getting older, that's fine. But he must be hurting for money too. <laughs> Alright, so Michael Madsen plays the girl's, the girl's dad. And basically, he's, he's an exposition piece. That's all he is in this movie. He ser the only role that he serves in this movie is to move... The plot forward and to explain what's happening he's so yeah michael madsen is uh sarah's dad um paige mcgarvin's dad and 
they 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 um all their dialogue to each other is over the cell phone. Even when she's like on the island, stranded on the island, she's able to get him on the phone. And throughout the movie, he keeps calling her back. Even after she loses her, her phone runs out of battery, he keeps calling her back. And it's under the cover of, hey, I really hope you get this. We got people in the air now. We got helicopters in the air. They're searching for you. Uh, and the tide's coming in. The tide's coming in. Oh, and this is happening too. We've recently found that there's a dead whale out in the water and that that's probably making the shark more aggressive. And exposition, 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 exposition. Even though he's not even talking to her, he's talking to her voicemail. Exposition. And the whole purpose of this is to explain to the brain dead audience who really, they must think are complete morons, what's going on. That's Michael Madsen's role in this is to is to be the he is the film's narrator he is the shark attack movie for dummies narrator that's what he is his purpose in this was nothing other than exposition and and, and this is the type of role that i believe was probably filmed in a day and a half it's probably filmed in a day because he doesn't have any any scenes with anybody else everything is over the cell phone everything is in the same costume the same room and and it was probably filmed in a day and a half. They probably you know paid him to come in. Let's film your let's you know let's film your scenes in a day. Let's ship Michael Madsen out. We've got a name we can put on the poster now. Michael Madsen Shark Season. Even though he doesn't interact with anybody and he is simply a glorified narrator. That's what he is. So yeah, I had a problem with his role. Um, I'm a big Michael Madsen fan, obviously. I really like a lot of his a lot of his films. Um, you know, he even had a lot of uh, um, kind of action noir thrillers back in the day. Michael Madsen's done a lot of stuff, and uh, to see these hard times that he's fallen on is kind of sad. But guys, Shark Season wasn't very good. It wasn't very good. Uh, my my grade on it is going to be a D. I have a hard time giving this a, a failing grade because there was stuff here. There was a nugget of an idea. There was a nugget of an idea. There was redeeming stuff here, and there was stuff here that could have been really good. Under the hands of somebody like a Toby Hooper, this could have been this year's crawl. It could have been. Under the hands of somebody competent who knows how to build tension and knows how to film things in a way that creates tension, this could have been something that was good and something that was engaging and something that was fun something that was scary instead it was an asylum picture has it wow. have you guys seen shark season have you seen it have you even heard about it let me know in the comments down below i'd love to hear if you've seen it what you thought of it make sure you hit that subscribe button and as always, thank you for joining me right here on the LQ Review, where we talk about all the geeky, nerdy stuff we love to talk about. Until next time, we'll see you guys later.